the structure of CAF2. My God, why is this interesting? Let's look at that, right? Fluorite structure is here. This is what we have. Let's take a look. All right. So, people, have a look now. Like always. Like always. What do you have over here? You have, if you can take a look clearly, you'll quickly realize that the, you know, uh, the, the ratios uh, or the roles rather have flipped. You get it? Why? So, notice on the right hand side, what do you have over here? The cation is the pink one. The cation is forming the lattice. Which kind of a lattice? Think about it. Which kind of a lattice? It's forming, if you just focus on the pink ones, it's forming an FCC lattice, right? Okay. Now, the point is, right, you have these two over here, the cation and the anion in a 1 is to 2 ratio, right? Now, as soon as you remember that much, you automatically get to the logic, okay, F minus has to be present in the tetrahedral voids and all of the tetrahedral voids should be filled. Get it? Right? Because if you have essentially, you know, per unit cell, you have four such cations, then you need to have eight F minus, right? So as to have the formula of one is to two, get it? And you will only have eight when you have, you know, uh, all the tetrahedral voids occupied. Well, that's not entirely true. You can have some octahedral, sorry, uh, uh, filled in some tetrahedral, or you can have all octahedral and half tetrahedral, but yeah. Simple. Let's let's keep our life simple, right? So yeah, they do occupy in such a format, and this is what we need to remember. All right, let's move on, right? What do we have? These cations over here are forming the lattice, and the uh, ions per unit cell, the positive ions per unit cell, turn out to be four. Similarly, you know, uh, F minus occupy all the tetrahedral voids, so their number turns out to be eight. All right, okay, right, okay. Now, as a result, CAF2 units per unit cell, right? CAF2 as a unit, single unit per unit cell, turns out to be the number is four. Get it? Okay, right, okay. Now, since we are talking about the cation over here, right? What is it? Well, you know, like uh, it's going to have eight F minus in touch with each other itself. Get it? How so? Let's let's go back and you'll quickly realize how so. Let's have a look over here. Right? So this is what I have, right? I'll have basically other unit cells as well. Get it? Right? I'll have other unit cells as well, right, people? Right? So I'll have something like this, this, this. Now, basically, this corner will be a part of eight unit cells. Think about it. This corner will be a part of eight unit cells, right? Now, if one unit cell, the nearest anion, right, is basically this, then eight unit cells are going to have eight overall such nearest anions for this corner, you know, cation, get it, right? And for that reason, this number over here turns out to be basically what, eight. However, if you talk about this one, right, so this is an anion which is placed in a tetrahedral void, get it? Right, it's placed in a tetrahedral void, and the, the coordination number of a tetrahedral void is four. For that reason, we have four over here. Right, we can flip the logic of two is to one. We can flip it like the uh, and flip it and generate the formula, and essentially we get a b two over here as a result. Get it? Okay, all right. Now then again, you know, people, you can remember all of these pieces of information that there are other examples. But then again, it, it's important, it's important, but I'm not throwing it as a compulsion onto you, right? It's up to you whether you want to remember all of this or not. Up to you entirely, right? Let's, let's have a look at this thing again. Let's, let's roll it up, right? Just, just focus, try to, you know, uh, just remember key pieces. For this one over here, you need to remember that, you know, cation is bigger, so it forms a lattice. And then the anions, double in number, occupy all the tetrahedral voids. And that's it. That's all that you have to remember. 
Furthermore, furthermore, the inverted ratio. Notice that the anion is the numerator and the cation is the denominator. That number over here then again comes out in a territory of tetrahedral voids, right? Under root 3a by 4, right? Half of the half of body diagonal, one fourth of the body diagonal turns out to be the summation of the radii of these two. Get it? All right, this is what we have, people. Now, let's move forward over here, right? Let's talk about the cation, right? Okay, distance of nearest anion. I think we have discussed this already, right? We have discussed this already, which one we are talking about. You can take a look at this one and you can find out the distance of the these two, right? And you'll get the answer. The number of nearest we have also found out since we talked about that this corner will be part of eight unit cells. So it will have eight tetrahedral void. All of them are filled and this is what we get. Let's make things more interesting, right? So this is nearest cation. This turns out to be the face center and hence the number turns out to be 12, isn't it? Right? Okay. 